Yes, hi, my name is Dominique. I am a BLM, BLM uh, advocate and supporter. Um, my connection to BLM, probably the biggest one, <laughs> is that I myself am Black, so you know, that plays a little part into it. Um, I also feel that the Black community um, is not represented um, as well in the society. So by having this movement, we kind of are pushing our our like our race to the forefront as in like we matter as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So ever since George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and, Lila, and Elijah McLean's deaths, stories um, regarding BLM and the police brutality regarding Black youth or Black people in general have spread all over the news. However, obviously right. these stories didn't really start with them before there was Philando Castile and Tamir Rice and Michael Brown and so many, so many others. Um, right. So as a youth, media has been a big part of your upbringing. What was your reaction typically when you hear stories like I don't want to say you get desensitized, but you see stories like this happen so often mm -hmm. that, you know, over time, it, it feels very repetitive, which is really sad to say. You see a story and then you kind of just wait for the next one to happen, really. Like, so many Black people are being killed or arrested or being attacked by the police it's a like a never-ending process at points you do feel dejected um and then I also feel like there's also points where maybe your like motivation is kind of rekindled to fight for what's right for black people and people in general so with all of these news about um, police brutality have you seen an impact towards those close to you or your general community my community does happen to be one where everything seems to be sweeped under the rug. It's kind of like, I like to um, describe it as like a utopian dystopia, just mm. because obviously racism and brutality happens everywhere in, in the world. But I feel like in the area I live in, um, just because it doesn't happen or it's not seen in the forefront as often, we kind of just pretend that it doesn't exist. We do see a lot of microaggressions here. Well, I remember back in high school, they'd be like, wow, you're really smart for like a black girl. It, it was like some sort of like surprise because I I got straight A's. I was, you know, top 10 in my school, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing is maybe the way I act. I think that's also a microaggression. You know, black people are supposed to supposedly be loud, aggressive, all this stuff. I'm very reserved, very quiet. So I think oftentimes, I, a lot of the time, I have, people are like, you act very, you know, you act very white, stuff like that. So it's kind of like there's a negative connotation with being Black, and they take the idea of all these, like, sought-after things. So, you know, the idea of being, you know, cool, calm, and collected, the idea of being intelligent, the idea of being creative, they associate that with the idea of being white and therefore superior. Mm -hmm. So um, those are a couple of microaggressions I've dealt with. I've been called the N-word a couple of times. Um, yeah, that's just the beginning of the list. Just, so just to give you like a general taste. And how do you normally deal with comments like these? Do you just go on about your day? In the past, I would say that I would kind of, you know, try to laugh it off, you know, not make a big deal about it. Um, as I'm learning, I find it better to, you know, kind of take these comments and face them head on. Um, not like aggressively. My whole thing is that I try to educate first. Do you find that when you usually take this approach, people listen? What is their general reaction? Most of the people I associate with, um, they will take the time to listen. Uh, I'm a college student now, so I've gotten to see like a general like increase in not tolerance, but understanding maybe about how their words and their actions impact me. Um, when I kind of like interact with people, depending on really how old they are and their mat maturity is really what affects whether or not they respond well or poorly to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Are there any groups of people or have you had any instances where you don't even bother talking about racism and all of these um, microaggressions in an educated way where you feel like it's not worth your time to discuss all of that. 
I will say I do know a couple of people. Um, I, I won't like name any names. I, I won't do that here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've okay. known them since they were in elementary school, really. And I've tried to, you know, kind of explain to them why certain things that they do is are like wrong. But their thing is that all of these things are jokes to them. So mm -hmm. they're like, oh, she doesn't have a sense of humor, you know, stuff like that. Even though the things that they're saying are not funny, they're more problematic and hurtful to um, like my well-being and other people's well-being. As of recently, it definitely has taken more of a toll. Um, just because I've also grown as a person, like I used to be really kind of like go with the flow, you know, not a big deal about things, trying not to make a big deal of things because I don't know, I felt that like my uncomfort was unwarranted. And now I understand that my uncomfort is warranted. So I feel like nowadays I do respond more like viscerally to, you know, seeing something on social media or hearing something that someone said. Um, just because I'm growing into my identity as a Black woman, that, and, like, this is something I'm now identifying with, like, firsthand. Have you have had to have conversations with any loved ones that may or may not share your own um, perspectives regarding race? I think maybe the issue stems most from, like, how we act upon hearing news. Like, I'm a very, I try to be on the forefront of, like, you know, protesting and all this stuff and my family seems to be a little more reserved than I am I just last month like during on my birthday um there was a protest that I wanted to go to that I did go to but before that I like had a very like you know uh heated conversation with my mom because she's her thing is that she's afraid about about like my well-being because you do know like that some protests like sometimes you know cops or police do come and they do kind of things do kind of get messy um that's where she was coming from so she wanted me to maybe support the black lives movement matter movement um from you know a less active area meanwhile i i really wanted to go to the protest because i felt that was the best way for me to support the movement mm -hmm. so it's less like a political thing and i think it's more just like you know, how we approach this activism. Mm -hmm. So like protests, have you been going to a lot of rallies or marches ever since everything has sort of sparked up? Um, I've only been to the one protest so far. Um, we're still having multiple in my township, but every time there is one, it seems that I have something else to do. So I'm trying to find that, um, like just the one that like I can go to and, you know, I can continue protesting like with all my allies and the people in my community. Mm -hmm. We're working on it. It's a work in progress. Yeah, it's it's enough, right? Trying your best. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, how do you normally prepare for a protest? Do you have a lot of people to go with you? What are some safety precautions that you yourself take? Um, so, when I do go to a protest, mm -hmm. I will. I do try to, you know form a group of people or, you know, meet up with friends. I prepare my signs. You, you bring water, just just basics, really. And how do you feel about the media's representation of protests? A lot of the time, the media kind of, you know, villainizes protesters. Mm -hmm. They're talking about how protesting is spiking corona rates. Mm -hmm. They're talking about how protesters are looting. I feel like they're focusing on a lot of negatives that need to be thoroughly like talked about because the main idea of the protest is for it to be peaceful. Does it get out of hand sometimes? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's what like the news really focuses on. You know, it always focuses on the bad. It never takes the time to pay attention to the good that protests are doing. So to people that are going to protests that don't have a lot of experience with it, um, I want to say, you know, be careful if you can use your race to your advantage um, as an ally, if you're an ally that maybe is white or white passing. The use of your, your privilege for the benefit of the protest is very much appreciated. First and foremost, stay safe and then 
understand what you're protesting for and its importance and its impact. So do you have any ideas of what people who are unwilling to go out into the streets, whether it be um, due to COVID or just due to physical violence, the threat of physical violence erupting, do you have any other ways that they can support the movement? Oh yeah, of course. Okay, so alternative ways. Social media is definitely a big one. Like almost every day, if not every day, I'll post something on my story that talks about, you know, a specific problem that has erupted from everything that's happening now. Um, so you can use social media. It doesn't matter if it's Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, anywhere you can reach people. I'll talk about not only Black people, but other minority groups and other groups that are often oppressed. There is intersectionality and there is the whole backlash of all lives matter. What is the difference between sharing focus to other marginalized groups and and all lives matter? I feel like the response to Black Lives Matter by all lives matter is under the pretense that um, people are thinking that we're saying Black Lives Matter only. That's not the statement. That's not what's being implied by the hashtag BLM. When we say Black Lives Matter, we mean Black Lives Matter too. Obviously, all lives matter. We understand that. Um, But it seems that Black Lives Matter a lot less than other identities do. Someone who truly supported the idea of Black, of all lives mattering, would not be upset by the specification of a life mattering. Yeah, definitely. Have you encountered anyone in real life that shares the sentiment of all lives matter? I try to make sure I don't follow people who, you know, perpetuate ideas that are harmful to me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I make sure they don't follow me because it's difficult to reach common ground there. Like, you you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like, do you feel like if they were to support um, said topics that we were talking about before, said movements, do you think that that is almost sort of an insult to you and your existence? I don't think it's like insult to my existence, much more as it is like ignorance to my existence. I feel like they don't understand my perspective. Mm-hmm. Like, you know how people are always saying, oh, put yourself in the other person's shoes. Mm-hmm. I feel like my shoes are too small for them to wear. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's very okay. powerful. Yeah. So do you have any ideas of what people who are unwilling to go out into the streets, whether it be um, due to COVID or just due to physical violence, the threat of physical violence erupting, do you have any other ways that they can support the movement? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, so alternative ways. So there are also a lot of uh, charities, GoFundMes that you can support. Um, but if you don't have the monetary like ability to do so, you can also do things like email senators, email people, you can call people up, um, you know, get laws moving. I feel like protesting is often seen as like the only way, but there are so many ways you can be proactive at home. So on your birthday, you started a fundraiser for BLM charities. Mm-hmm. So can you talk a little bit about your experience regarding that? So I did start a charity. Um, it was relief for uh, corrupt prison systems. Um, I just wanted to raise $200, you know, do my part. Another way I could be an activist in the BLM um, movement. I ended up reaching my, my, you know, my goal of $200. And mm-hmm. so all that money went to that relief fund. I just did that because, you know, you get a lot of clout on your birthday. So mm-hmm. I feel like if I have clout, why not use it for like a good cause? Yeah. You know. And so how has the people around you um, reacted to this fundraiser? Um, they were all pretty positive for the most part. Like uh, the people around me were the ones who were donating to the fundraiser. Mm-hmm. Um, so like whenever I saw like a little donation, like um, notification from a certain person, I'd be like, oh, thank you. I'd type them a little note, like, thank you for donating to my fund. And they'd be like, of course, like this is a good cause. So mm-hmm. it's been pretty positive like response. Mm-hmm. So would you recommend um, that other youth who do not have the financial means to donate themselves, would you recommend that they take a similar approach to what you have done? I think so, yeah. Too. Yeah, like if you can start a fundraiser 
and you can get money from other people to put towards these charities and just other funds Mm -hmm. uh by all means do it like it doesn't hurt you to try um you know five dollars is still five dollars towards you know equality um it doesn't matter if it's five dollars or like five million dollars every cent counts towards these causes how do you think um students or youth can do to better support the movement well definitely talk to you know your peers about microaggressions macroaggressions because you know what they say the youth are the future we can continue like representing ourselves in protests or you know showing interest in you know having laws like overrided overridden or, or made then i think we're doing our job um what would you say to people who want to keep the fight going however they are just feeling like it's too heavy for the moment do you have anything to say to them yeah i'd say to those people that you know it's okay to have to take a break sometimes like it, it does get overwhelming sometimes um regroup because you can't do your best you can't do what you can for the movement if you're feeling run down it's obvious that like we want to give our 100 percent to like you know fighting all the corruption and the racism all that stuff um but if you're feeling you know out of it dejected disengaged just self-care self-care is important you know The Black Lives Matter movement, it was founded in 2013. So we've been around for years, really. Um, I think like with any movement, um, you know, when things happen, you see like, you know, uh, spike spikes in like activism um, regarding and retaining to any movement. So mm-hmm. we're currently in a spike, but I really hope that spike, like we continue to have all this like activism like going on and then maybe I'll even spike even more. So. I don't want to say it's trendy. It's definitely something that's like very prevalent right now and fresh in people's minds and in the forefront of people's minds. Um, but it's not a trend to hop on. You shouldn't treat it like that. It's something, it's a it's a community, it's a movement that is working towards the greater good of everyone that mm-hmm. is involved in it. The whole idea of racial tensions being completely abolished doesn't necessarily seem out of reach to me but I feel like we're more likely to you know just minimize like who holds like these um you know racist thoughts and minimize microaggressions and you know brutality to the point where like brutality is a minority Mm -hmm. yeah That's a wonderful note to end this interview on. So thank you, Dominique, for sharing your own perspective regarding BLM. And thank you for sharing it, despite the fact that in times like these, a lot of the perspective of youth are often so quickly brushed aside, despite the fact that the sharing and resharing of information on social media proves to be continuously impactful. So thank you for everything that you have been doing. My pleasure. To the Regent Park community, thank you for joining us today. That will be it. However, remember that there is no small form of support. If anything, small acts of activism will only prove to be more impactful when seen with the collective. In upcoming weeks, we'll be sure to explore other ways that the community is helping out BLM and keeping the movement alive. So stay tuned. There is more to come. Please do not forget to like, comment, and share to our channel, follow us on all our social media platforms, and for more information, please check out our website.